transporting the President of the United States across the globe on the most renowned and probably most significant jet in the world, which is six floors tall, expensive to operate, and can withstand nuclear explosions, is no easy assignment. It is crucial that the Air Force One is expertly equipped with the highest level of luxury, unbreakable security, and missile defense systems, and trust us, it takes into account all the exciting high-end military characteristics. It makes sense why the Flying White House has gained notoriety in the media. Let's go inside and take a look, shall we? Fasten your seatbelts before entering the three-level cabin's decorated interior and exploring the aircraft's unique features. Let's discuss the aircraft in more detail. What is the Air Force? You only need to look at the American flag on the tail or the big United States of America lettering to appreciate the uniqueness of the standard Air Force One plane, that enormous blue and white attention-grabbing super aircraft. There isn't really anything else like it, in fact, there is something that is identical to it, because there are multiple Air Force One aircraft. Actually, the White House has two identical properties. Theodore Roosevelt was the first American president to fly in an aircraft back in 1910, but it wasn't until President Eisenhower's administration in 1953 that the term Air Force One was formally coined. In 1962, John F. Kennedy was the first to fly in a jet that was designed specifically for presidential use, a modified Boeing 747-200B series aircraft with the tail codes 28,000 and 29,000, respectively. Since then, the illustrious wings have carried everyone from President Obama to President Nixon to President Reagan to President Trump and everyone in between. The current pair of Boeing jumbo jets were first flown in 1991, during the administration of George H. W. Bush. Because they are outfitted with exceptional security and comfort features, it should come as no surprise that these aircraft are expensive. Trump reportedly reached an informal agreement with Boeing to set a price cap of $3.9 billion for two new Air Force Ones, in fact, Boeing claimed that Trump had quoted negotiated a good deal. However, the Defense Department's first official report indicates that the price is significantly higher, the Pentagon will have to pay $5.2 billion for the updated pair. The two aircraft share the same basic design as a standard commercial Boeing 747. They are enormous, measuring about three times as tall as a giraffe and as long as a city block. Each has four engines that produce 56,700 pounds of thrust per engine, allowing the aircraft to reach top speeds of almost 700 miles per hour, just 10% slower than the speed of sound. The aircraft can travel long distances on a single full tank that holds 60,000 pounds. These aircraft have a global range of half a planet. Contrary to popular belief, one also cruises at a higher altitude than the ordinary airliner, at 45,000 feet rather than 30,000 feet. One does not particularly mention this Boeing or this similar Air Force in reality. One isn't really a plane it's just a name and a point of reference. For example, if the president boarded an F-22 Raptor for the duration of his flight, that jet would be the new Air Force One. It doesn't even have to be a transport plane or a luxurious Boeing, it could be a B-2 Spirit stealth bomber. One is reasonable the name is simply the radio call for any Air Force vehicle carrying the president, and all crew members and air traffic controllers are informed of this in order to prevent confusion with any other nearby aircraft and to ensure that the president's plane's safety is always given priority. The name system was first used during the Eisenhower administration when the plane carrying the president had the same call sign as an Eastern Airlines commercial flight and they were both flying in the same airspace. This immediately prompted the need for a new and improved system like a regular Boeing 747. If the President flies on an Army aircraft, it is known as Army 1, while a Navy aircraft is known as Marine 1. As we move from bottom to top, you'll see that the interior of the Air Force 1 airplanes doesn't match commercial 747s in the slightest. Presidential transport planes are often equipped with three distinct floors. 
Usually, the lowest floor is used for storage. While the complicated communications equipment is located on the higher level, the primary passenger area is located on the middle level. The plane's onboard living quarters include the president's own bedroom, bathroom, workout room, and office as if that weren't enough luxury most of the furniture is handcrafted by master carpenters suited to the president's particular tastes, but the passenger area is by far the most interesting space, making most apartments seem small. The centerpiece of the middle level is a sizable conference room that serves as both the president's dining room and the work area for senior personnel. Traveling reporters are also given a spot in the enormous size. Jack can accommodate 70 passengers and 26 crew members, but despite our reasonable understanding of the layout, even visiting politicians and high-level journalists are prohibited from accessing some areas of the aircraft. As a result, besides the president and his staff, no one else has a detailed understanding of how these components fit together. However, we can be sure that the president won't be served a bag of stale, over-salted peanuts for lunch because the flight attendants offer first-class service around the clock, complete with a delectable, high-quality menu. Devoted cooks prepare anything the president desires, which may include specialty dishes or some authentic fast food. Don't take our word for it, view for yourself the staff is equipped to feed up to 100 people at once, and the storage facility can retain as much as 2,000 meals, unlike the preparation process for conventional airline meals. Past meals have featured anything from KFC chicken to Caesar wraps, steaks, taco salads, and fresh salads. The presidential elements while purchasing in order to safeguard the president from the possibility of a planned poison assault, the White House staff must choose markets at random, carry out groceries covertly, and never source from the same place twice. The dedicated medical room on board Air Force One has a fold-out operating table in case emergency surgery is required, along with an extensive pharmacy, a defibrillator, oxygen, and more. Of course, having all this equipment is useless if no one knows how to use it, which is why a staff doctor is always on board and follows the president wherever he goes in the event that something do an Air Force with all of these devices in place, the president can contact just about anyone in the world at the touch of a button. If he isn't making the calls himself, one of the carefully screened military personnel on board will. One planes are equipped with 19,000 televisions to keep up with the events happening on the ground as well as 85 telephones, collection of secure two-way radios, plus fax machines and ultra-high-speed onboard Wi-Fi. 26 people make up the average crew of Air Force One, and they are all expected to operate with the utmost professionalism and security. Each and every staff member chosen from the military must pass thorough background checks and have exceptional service records. People, this is not your typical profession which is why the last Air Force when the President must say farewell to his devoted crew of more than four years, taking just one flight is always an emotional experience. Another intriguing feature of Air Force One that distinguishes it from conventional aircraft is that it is not dependent on airport facilities or staff, which significantly reduces security risks. While most planes need to stop every few hours to refuel due to its amazing ability to refuel in midair, the presidential plane technically never needs to land. This is a crucial tactic in an emergency situation especially when the threat is land-based. Sure, it's an essential protection measure but it's also extremely risky. The planes have their own retractable stairways, their own baggage loaders, and there's not just one entrance but three in case any are compromised. Taxpayers paid exactly $206-337 for every single hour spent in the air, or nearly $1 million, on a typical travel from New York to Los Angeles. But why was the cost so high? First, the 26-person crew must be paid. Next, the four engines need an estimated 5 gallons of petrol per mile which raises the estimated fuel expenses to an astounding $80,000 per hour. 
You can see how the costs build up rapidly by factoring in the cargo planes required to convey the presidential limousine, as well as the three following helicopters and the second Boeing that must board the trip in case the first one is damaged. Fortunately, the chances of something happening to that plane are slim to none because it is equipped with some of the most cutting-edge avionics and defense systems imaginable. For example, the plane can thwart enemy radars and eject white-hot flares to divert any incoming heat-seeking missiles, and it can jam and deflect any incoming infrared-seeking missiles using ERP jammers, which are essentially special infrared lights. There is a lot more planning and logistics involved than most people realize before a flight takes off, with expert Air Force crews at the Maryland Andrews Air Force Base carefully inspecting the plane before any flight. Once the all-clear is given, the Marine One helicopter transports a president from the White House to the destination. Is $200,000 per hour too pricey to keep this bird in the air? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like subscribe and have a wonderful day. Catch you next time.